With 20 new stalls plus 20 new riders, the Liberty Equestrian Team is ready to saddle up for a brand new season. Well, if you're a tennis fan, this time of year is heaven. Wait, did he say ladies? <laughs> I think I'll leave archery to the experts. Whatever happens, tell my family I love them. Let's do this. You can open your eyes now. For Game On, I'm Victoria Wood. And she recently caught up with a guy who was a big part of that team. That's right. Steve Feaster grew up throwing for sports, whether it was a baseball in his younger years or his current love of the javelin. He has always relied on his arm. But when life threw a spear of its own, his trust in God is what he relied on the most. Teamwork is very important to the sport of equestrian. And most of the time, your teammates aren't even human. Ain't that right, Anita? Liberty is used to a very dominating performance against UNC Asheville over the years, but on Tuesday night, it was a nail-biter. They made some mistakes. It wasn't always pretty, but in the end, they found a way to pull it out. Asheville has come out really strong in this first half. Is it great offense on their part or poor defense on your part that has kept this game so close? I think it's a little combination of both. Do you hear that? I'm pretty sure roosters are crowing all over the place. It is extremely early to be starting a game here in hockey time. 10.30 p.m., that's pretty normal, but 10.30 a.m., not so much. I hope you've been enjoying the hockey game so far. For the next several minutes, we want to give you a preview of our daily sports show, Game On. Oh, I am here, and I am literally surrounded by a sea of fans. Over 7,000 of these guys came out here last year and literally smashed the record. Reporting from the Vine Center, I'm Victoria Wood. <laughs> the season might be over for the Liberty University archery team, but it's their practices in the offseason that strengthens this team the most. If you think this is close, the guys on this team are a lot closer. I am Whistle Bridges. I am Big Rig. I am Daddy. I'm Corkscrew. I'm Anger Management. I'm Pork Chop. And I'm the coach, and we are Liberty Archery. And only in a family could you get away with calling each other names like that. Our team, I, I could consider them family because we're such close friends. And I've met some of my greatest friends because of how close we are and how family oriented we are. So it's, it's not really the team, but more of a just a fellowship, if you will. And this fellowship of the bow shares the same love for archery as they do for each other. Most of our guys on the team are big hunters, and that's where the whole passion in archery comes from. We love to hunt, we love to shoot our bows, even if we're just hanging out for a couple hours. Um, so that's really what our practices are about, is just spending time together, getting to know each other a little better. Uh, growing as a team and growing as, as individuals, and that's my job, is to... Uh, provide the leadership and from time to time um, a little spiritual guidance if needed. Growing together only inspires the team to add more members to the ever-growing family. We're dysfunctional. Our goal for this year has been to grow the team. Uh, this year when I took over there was four originally on the team and we're up to eight members currently. So it's kind of been our focus just to grow the team, grow the sport on campus. We'd like to see more people come out, especially some ladies come and join the team. Wait, did he say ladies? After about three attempts, I managed to let one fly. I think I'll leave archery to the experts. And shooting for most of their lives would definitely put these guys in the expert category. I've joined the archer team because I've been 
in archery since I was eight years old. And so I feel like I've been getting better every year and I want to see how well I can do at a collegiate level. It's what I do. I, I'm not a football player, I'm not a basketball player. And that's, that's my sport is, is archery because that's what I do, it's what I know. I think it's time to test exactly how good these shooters really are. Whatever happens, tell my family I love them. Let's do this. I trust you. With the cards, we have a your favor. You can open your eyes now. For Game On, I'm Victoria Wood. <laughs> the love of chocolate is universal, and one store in downtown Lynchburg turns this universal favorite into a local experience. You can never be angry when you get chocolate from here. When Carla Mary Mattis founded Cow Artisan Chocolate in 2012, they had no idea their small dream would soon become this big reality. It started as a hobby. My wife and I just uh, liked making chocolate from the bean. And then it went, we still opened up in the community market and then we kind of just grew very organically. And now we have this store where we, um, we make all of our own chocolate from the cocoa bean. We make bars, truffles, uh, and pastries, uh, all from our chocolate. Cow is unique in the way they make their chocolate, and it all starts with the beans. The quality of cocoa beans makes all the difference in the world of the taste. And Cow makes sure they get the best, importing their beans from all over the world. So we get our beans, they're raw, and we roast them in our convection oven. There's nothing fancy about the oven. We roast the beans and then we put them through a winnower, which is a piece of machinery that um, breaks the husks from the nib and then gets the nib away from the husk. So we take the nibs and we put them in the melanger, which is a big machine out front. So the nibs and sugar and cocoa butter all go into the melanger and it grinds it up together. And we let our chocolate grind for about two days. Once the two days are up, we take it out and at that point it's become what we call chocolate. The process of making homemade chocolate may be difficult, but the hardest part, making a choice. That one. It takes four to five days to complete the entire process of taking chocolate from bean to bar. There's uh, not a lot of places that make their own chocolate from the bean. It's not something you're going to find really anywhere else in Lynchburg. We're really putting out good quality chocolate and people might not know um, when they walk into a store what's good and bad quality. So to educate people um, about where our chocolate comes from and knowing that it's very high quality and I'm not giving people some processed chemical laden product. Um, that's really important to me. Cal's dedication to creating such a delicious quality product results in customers who want a taste of the real deal. Thanks. How was it? Everything's excellent. The customers we have are wonderful. Everyone's always so uh, happy to come in here. And if you take a picture, it'll last longer. I'm Victoria Wood reporting for Liberty Champion News.